there are many different wireless hacking tools and devices out there, right? So we will cover some of the most popular and the most effective ones here. But before I cover some of these tools, let me go over some of the challenges that you may actually experience, especially with Linux and uh, in this case, of course, Kali Linux and wireless networking hardware. And also let me actually go over some of the tips that will and also let me go cover a few tips that will make your life easier whenever you're actually doing pen testing. First, you want very specific features in a wireless adapter and the related drivers, right? The first one is actually to be able to monitor traffic in promiscuous mode, otherwise you know known as passive scanning, right? So you want to actually, of course, be able to scan the wireless network and then you know look for devices out there, right? Now the other feature is packet injection. Now packet injection is actually basically the ability to transmit arbitrary packets in the network so that you can replay traffic uh, on that network or speed up statistics or statistical attacks like web and you know many others, right? Uh, also packet injection allows you to inject packets to perform uh, attacks like deauthentication attacks. In other words, actually to be able to kick uh, users out of the wireless network, right? So uh, do a, a denial service condition or uh, to be able to actually kick them out so they can join a rogue access point. And we'll go over, you know, all these type of attacks later in this course, right? Now, packet injection was originally done with a tool called AirJack. Nowadays, many people use a tool or a series of tools called Aircrack NG, and we will cover those, as I mentioned before, later in this course. Now, some of the built-in wireless adapters in laptops or desktop machines will not play well with Kali Linux or some of these tools, right? That's why so many people use external wireless adapters. Now, the following are some of the most popular wireless adapters used by pen testers uh, out there, so ethical hackers out in the industry. And what I'm doing is actually I, I created a GitHub repository that I'm listing them in that repository for your reference. But if you know of others and have some success stories, please, please, you know, feel free to contribute by requesting a pull request or opening a GitHub issue in this uh, repository, right? So now um, one of the uh, most popular chipsets out there used by many pen testers is actually Etheros, right? And I'm highlighting a few examples here for your reference, right? Uh, and it's actually because it has the ability to perform not only well as far as the performance in the machine, but also the it's actually open source and it you know it can be ported to you know to different systems. Now the main challenge with these drivers is that many laptops have migrated from PCMCIA, of course, and support uh, external uh, Etheros you know base cards. It's actually fairly limited nowadays, right? Another one is actually Realtek, right? And specifically the RTL eighty one seventy or eighty one eighty seven driver. Uh, and it's actually used in, in many adapters that are named or branded uh, alpha adapters. And actually, this driver is supported by the Linux kernel for years and has been the choice for many pen testers out there. The challenge with this one is the lack of 802.11 AN and AC support, right? So now it can actually be used for injecting packets into the wireless network and actually works well with Mac OS X, right? Now, another one is, of course, the Intel Pro Wireless uh, or the IWL uh, Wi-Fi. Many vendors out there actually use that uh, Intel 802.11 chipsets in their laptops and, and desktop systems. Uh, but, uh, or latest versions of the Intel chipsets are actually supported by the uh, IWL Wi-Fi or IWLAGN um Linux drivers, right? So, and there is actually supported by Linux kernels uh, or recent Linux kernels, uh, rather. Now, one of the most popular is the Alpha adapter, and actually here I'm showing you an example of you know one of these adapters, and there's several versions and several um, 
uh, chipsets that actually they support. But these are actually one of the most popular and one of the ones that actually use a lot uh, for, especially for promiscuous mode uh, and monitoring. Uh, another one is a, a TP-Link, and there are several versions of the TP-Link. I actually have a, an N150 wireless high gain a USB adapter uh, that I also use. Um, and I also have a pineapple, and I will cover what is actually a pineapple in a, in a few minutes. But what I want to actually highlight is that there's a whole bunch of different wireless adapters that I'm actually including here for your reference, and then, you know, some information about them, right? So some that are fairly cheap and compatible with Kali Linux, other ones that are actually not that great with Kali, or either if it actually works with Kali, you may not be able to actually do a packet injection, or it may be unreliable to do packet injection, right? So, so again, I'm actually highlighting this, and feel free to actually contribute to the to the list, you know, of course. And I will be updating this as, as we go, uh, and and time progresses. Uh, but you know, again, you know, this is actually out there for your reference, right? Now, again, I typically use the Alpha Atheros uh, AR9271, as I'm actually showing. Uh, in the screen here, and also the TP-Link N150, but I also use a tool from Hack5 that is called the Pineapple. Now, there's several versions of uh, this uh, piece of hardware, right? Uh, and the one that I'm actually showing here is the Pineapple Tetra, right? Now, again, this actually is a product by a company called Hack5, and uh, they have you know many different versions. They have uh, the Nano uh, Basic Edition, which is actually, you know, again, the base model. They have the Nano Tactical Edition, the Nano Tactical Elite Edition, and then two Tetras uh, editions, the Basic and the Tactical Edition. And I'm showing their, uh, you know, the website here for your reference, right? Now, the cool thing about the Pineapple is that it's not only a good wireless adapter or, you know, of course, device for monitoring, and doing packet injection, but it also, also comes with many different tools for wireless pen texting, right? So you can do uh, man-in-the-middle attacks, you can do a lot of uh, rogue AP type of attacks, you can do over-the-air apps uh, and modules, you know, and actually you can uh, install, you know, different modules, you know, from a pretty nifty um, web-based interface, right? Um, so again, you know, there's many, many different attacks and many different utilities with with that, right? Now let's go over some of the actual software tools uh, that are available out there, right? So earlier in this lesson, I mentioned a tool called Aircrack or Aircrack NG, right? And this is actually one of the most popular and widely known wireless password cracking tools and actually a series of tools that you can actually do, you know, many different things. It actually has been used by many ethical hackers to attack WEP or WEP and also WPA as well, right? Uh, you will learn more about these tools later in this course, but in a nutshell, Aircrack actually uh, works by first capturing packets on the network and then tries to recover the password of the network by analyzing those packets, right? It also implements standard FMS attacks uh, with some optimizations to actually be able to recover or crack passwords of the network, right? Uh, it comes by default in Kali Linux, but you can also download it, you know, uh, as a standalone at their website that I'm actually sharing here, right? Or another tool that is actually fairly popular is called Airsnort, right? And it's actually basically a wireless LAN password cracking tool as well, and it's actually fairly simple to use, right? And you can download it at the link that I'm showing here. Now, another popular tool is Kismet, and it supports 802.11, A, B, G, and N, right? And it's basically a layer 2 wireless network sniffer that um, that also comes with, quote-unquote, an intrusion detection system, right? This tool is actually used in Wi-Fi troubleshooting as well, so not only for ethical hacking, but many uh, system administrators out there or network administrators actually use this for troubleshooting a Wi-Fi uh, network, right? And uh, now Kismet basically collects the packets to identify standard network uh, activity and also detects the hidden networks that may be out there, right? And you can download Kismet at the link that I'm showing here. Now there's a similar tool 
uh, called Kismac. And basically, it's a, a tool that basically does a similar functionality like the network discovery um, that you actually have in Kismet, but in this case, it's actually supported uh, in the Mac OS X operating system. Uh, Kismac also scans network pace, pa- passively to be able to actually, you know, not only identify what networks are out there, but for you to actually be able to crack web and WPA keys by using brute force or exploiting, you know, any any type of ex- vulnerability uh, out there. And you can download it at the link that I'm highlighting here. Now, another popular tool uh, for cracking wireless passwords, and it's not only for just you know Wi-Fi or wireless, uh, but it also can be used to crack uh, other you know type of passwords. Uh, the tool is called Cain and Abel, right? And you can actually download it here. It's actually fairly popular uh, by many uh, ethical hackers and you know pen testers out there. Uh, and another one, another tool is the Fern Wi-Fi Wireless Cracker, right? And basically, it actually lets you. See real-time network traffic and also identify host within the network. Right now, with Fern, you can crack and also recover uh, keys from uh, Web WPA and also WPS. Right, and it's actually a fairly easy tool uh, out there. Right, so it can also run uh, other network-based attacks on wireless uh, or Ethernet-based networks. Right, when you use it to crack. WPA or WPA2, it actually uses WPS-based dictionary-based attacks, right? So there's also a commercial or professional version of the tool that has additional features, but of course, it's not free, right? Now, you can download the Fern Wi-Fi uh, wireless cracker at the link that I'm actually showing here. Another tool is Cowpatty, right? And uh, this is actually another nice um, and fairly simple to use wireless password cracking tool. And it's actually in a, uh, comes with an automated dictionary attack uh, for uh, cracking passwords of WPA, PSK, um, and networks, right? It also comes pre-installed in Kali Linux. So, so some of these, or most of these tools, uh, already are pre-installed in Kali Linux, or you can download it from the, from the link that I'm highlighting here. Ghost Fisher is another nice hacking tool to get passwords over a wireless network, right? This tool actually can execute fast automated phishing attacks against a wireless network to actually steal password, right? So quote unquote steal password. It is actually free to use and it's available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. It actually comes pre-installed as well in Kali Linux, but you can also download it as a standalone at the GitHub repository that I'm sharing here. Now, there are many other different tools like uh, WebAttack and NetStumbler, and I'm highlighting a few or giving you the links in here for your reference. But we will cover some of these tools and uh, devices later in this course, uh, and you will actually see how to actually use them to attack WEP or you know, web networks and also WPA networks as well. 